he can do with his first real touch of the ball. And after waiting patiently for the opening to come, Duxbury's ball through, finds Little John, and then Tipton's header finds him again. And this time there's a man waiting in Paul Ricker for his first goal of the season. the half came to a close, Oldham could have said they should have been 2-0 up. After another good build-up involving Little John, who'd come on amazingly as a substitute, surprisingly the offside flag went against Paul Allett. Oldham continued to search for that vital second goal that would give them the breathing space that they did deserve. Andrew Holt missing that effort. And even Andy Ritchie came on as a sub late on to try and keep hold of the three points. Little John's creativity again causing more problems for the Colchester defence. The new boy Tipton had his best moment of the afternoon. As I said, Tipton was at the centre of a lot of Eldon's attacks during the match. It was unfortunate not to get himself on the score sheet, but in the end it was a vital win that stopped that five-game run without a win. Little John has remarkably put it wide, and a golden opportunity goes begging. Yes, a glorious chance it was, uh, Adrian Little John inside the box. Second encounter between the two sides in the space of four days. And it was Oldham Athletic who did the early pressing in the match, Matthew Tipton going close after a good cross into the box eventually he saw his shot come back off the post but Oldham weren't to be denied the opening goal of the game and it's the youngster Phil Salt with the strike Gillingham had a couple of opportunities to clear good work from Salt, picked the ball up and his shot skewing in past the helpless goalkeeper and Oldham the one goal to the good Athletics this afternoon, who are fielding no fewer than four YTS or former YTS players in the match. And eventually managed to get themselves two goals to the good, and it was the fullback Scott McNiven up in the attack. Good work from Sean Garnett. He put the ball into the box. McNiven controlling on the second attempt around the Gillingham defence, and he smashed it home to double Oldham's money. to the second half, Oldham Athletic looked to build on their excellent 2-0 start. It was John Sheridan picking up the loose ball in midfield, carrying it a good 30 or 40 yards and unleashing a 25-yarder which just passed the post. Gillingham's only real chance in the match came late on. Good work from Carla Seibel with the flick on and Paul Smith forcing Gary Kelly into an excellent stop. Interesting afternoon for Andy Rich's men at Boundary Park the Welsh rivals Wrexham they started in positive fashion Scott McNiven's persistence down the flank finding some room and eventually a quality cross that Steve Whitehall side foots in but this was only the start of a very interesting afternoon The sort of afternoon that gives managers grey hairs, because Wrexham found themselves back level near enough straight away. Terry Cook on loan from Manchester United, skipping past one person and then providing a quality cross that was headed in by Neil Roberts. The second half continued in the same vein as the first. Matthew Tipton has proven in the second division that he's a player to watch, and his teenage skill and perseverance found some space and nearly the back of the net with that shot. Watch out for him later in the match. 
Unfortunately, before it got better, it had to get worse. Great goal from Brian Carey from that cross from the left from Peter Ward. Gave the Welshman the lead, 2-1. An inspired substitution by Andy Ritchie. Mark Alec coming on for Phil Salt. Here's Alec having one of his first touches and providing immediately the equaliser. Another great cross in, and Scott McGiven finding himself in some space to head past a hapless keeper. If Andy Ritchie was happy about Scott McNiven's equaliser, things were going to get even better for the Elden boss. As Wrexham were looking for their own super sub, Ian Rush to find a way through. It eventually comes to Mark Allett and watch a delightful one-two being played with John McGinley. And a finish from Matthew Tipton that is just out of this world. Probably one of the best goals that Elden have scored this season. No doubt that it's one of the most vital. John Sheridan has yet to mark his Oldham career with a goal. But he came very close to increasing the scoreline in the dying seconds, but for a wonderful tip over from the Wrexham keeper, Hartwright. <laughs> Maybe for Wrexham, not for, not for us. Uh, plugged ourselves in the electric chair today and uh, an hour and a half full of torture. I mean, we, we didn't particularly play well. We got to back into it a little bit in the second half. But uh, you've got to say that we've, uh, we've scraped a result, really, that we didn't deserve, and uh, we've, we've been lucky today. We certainly came back well in the second half. Uh, it's supposed to be 10 minutes to go, 2-1 down. Uh, I mean, all credit to the lads. I mean, they, they, they didn't give up at all. The, you know, all the way to the end, they gave Endeavour. Um, we changed it at half-time to 4-4-2. We were playing a five in the first half and we felt we were giving them too much room. And second half, we got on top of their midfield a little bit and they didn't have as many uh, chances in the second half as they did in the first. And then we went behind to really a goal. Well, Sean Garnett's got to it first, went to head it away and he's headed it onto the lad's head and it's uh, rebounded into the goal. Um, and then we've had a little bit of luck again with a cross that's come over. But, uh, you know, we changed things, brought Mark Allett on and he sort of changed the game, got a bit of pace down there. Um, Phil Salt's legs were just a bit tired, a young lad. Mm -hmm. And um, as I say, the, the luck's been on our side today. And how, how are you finding management then, And Is it uh, to your liking? Yeah, it's OK from Monday to Friday. It's Saturday that's the problem. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I can't pull any hair out today, so, uh, you know, I'm OK in that department. But I'm enjoying it. It's a, it's a good experience. It's, um, it's one of those things that you've got to get your teeth into, and I'm still learning. And it's difficult at times when, you know, when things go on on the pitch to get actual messages on. And that's a, a learning curve, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's great. Next to the Memorial Ground for Bristol Rovers match against Oldham, commentary from Phil Duffel. Tipton scrapping with Smith. It's the older man who's emerged in possession. Square ball, McNiven missed his kick, Rickers might not. He scored for Oldham Athletic, it's 1-0 to the visitors. Just over five minutes played. Roberts against Sinnott, still going Roberts. Now Curitan, it's 1-1 and Jamie Curitan finally does the job for Bristol Rovers. In by Allard. With a cushioned header. Chance, goal. Oldham, 2 1. John Sheridan with a really classy finish. Good ball by Penrice. It's Roberts. And it's 2 2. And Rovers have saved it at the death. And Jason Roberts, the man of the moment. Comes good once more for Bristol Rovers. The bottom two both lock it, that is, is Dan Freeman as he slams in to give Brentford the lead. In the second half, it was a case of the Latics trying everything to get that vital equaliser, and Andrew Holt nearly provided it. But his shot was deflected over the top thanks to a combination of Bates's deflection and a wonderful. Awusu got a leg out. Awusu. Taken on by Charlie Oakway. 
Oakway is quite an interesting character. He's got 11 Christian names on his birth certificate, and none of them is Charlie. <laughs> Most of them are names of that great uh, Queen's Park Rangers team of the mid-70s. A mistake here, and John McGinley must be in for the equaliser. John doesn't miss them, Martin, does he? Haraidus, and I think it was a mistake. McGinley couldn't believe his luck. All the old experience shown there from John McGinley. Dearden had come, couldn't believe it. Haraidus and misses. McGinley has a look. Out comes Dearden, 1-1. One, one. Smashing goal. Big mistake from the Icelandic man. Look at McGinley, right on spot. It's one of them, Martin, you have to go for it. Hebel knew Graham was coming. He couldn't duck out, and Graham went through him. Sheridan's pass, Duxbury just loitering on the left. Keeping it in play, back for Reid. Chance for an early cross, and what a fine cross it was. So close to Oldham, going in front from Whitehall. That should have been in, Martin, that should have been 2-1. That should have been 2-1, great cross. First time, Whitehall steals in, he's only got to hit the target, look at that. Just wide of the post. has presented it to John McGinley. Can he go through again here? Mm. Now, the referee's got a big decision to make. And he's sent Jamie Bates off. Martin Haridison was right alongside Bates. This is going to be interesting to see the replay. Bates makes a mistake. McGinley's not got the pace to get away from him. Look at Haridison getting back. Good decision, ref. Last man. No doubt about that when they see the replay. They were pointing to Ryderson. He wasn't back in time. Bates was the last man. Brentford down to ten. Found a decent ball out to Whitehall, who played his part well. Now Sheridan's lost it. Aruso. Can he go on here? And it's a goal for Freeman. The ten men have taken the lead. Well, that's better from Darren Freeman. I just said how quiet he was earlier on. This time, a Wusu breaks through his pace, fires a left foot strike, panned out by the keeper, and Freeman can't believe. Certainly, all of them are going to gamble now. Crossing towards Tipton, and a terrific equaliser from Lee Duxbury. So Brentford's joy relatively short-lived. Love a slack defending here, Martin. A bit of ball watching again. Look at Duxbury between two players. A Wusu back there doing nothing. Duxbury from eight yards heads it down. 2-2. Two -two. A Wusu back there defending, but he's guarding, he's marking nobody. Duxbury with a diving header in the back of the net past Dearden. And now Brentford have got it all to do again. 2-2. Two -two. Brentford in trouble, McGinley, the goalkeeper's committed, Anderson's got back on the line, what's McGinley going to do here, he's going to try and power it, it's off the bar via a deflection or two, and Brentford <laughs> survived by a matter of millimetres. I thought McGinley had done too much, I thought he'd taken his time too long, and I think it might have been Haridison's head that came off Martin before it cannoned off the bar. And, uh, did and was left high and dry it seemed. I thought John should have done it earlier. I think Haridison gets back there, just a touch off the crossbar. What a let off, but McGinley for me should have hit it. Picking out Holt. He looks for Whitehall, who lets it run for McGinley. Haridison was caught by Tipton then. Ref had a look at it, let it play. Holt with a cross. In McGinley! For the ball, but not in the net. Well, John McGinley, I think Martin will be saying, why didn't I go for the far post? We said earlier, he does get involved in the build-up, then he steals in, and this is a decent ball. Right to the far post, John McGinley trying just to power it. And a good start from Dearden. Do be aiming for the far post here, John. Scores for power, good start from the keeper. Well, who plays Chelsea in the third round of the FA Cup will be decided here at Griffin Park by a penalty shootout. I hope you're going to put it to the goalkeeper's right, man. Just before you strike the ball, you see him going that way. That's what you get paid all this money as a professional player to decide on. Here we go, first penalty. Paul Reid scores. Good, hold him. Good penalty, isn't it? Because dear than go... Ro 
Rollins misses. It's uh, Tipton, he scores. I've been impressed with him since he came on, he's looked lively. He's played so nobly tonight. And thumps at his penalty, foot through the ball, back. Short approach, successful, job done. They fancy that corner, don't they, Oldham? And he keeps Brentford's hopes alive. Oh, and John McGinley had a crucial time. Seemed to place it well enough. Did and flew through the air and made a tremendous save. From Robert Quinn. Oh, no! He's rattled the crossbar. Wow, uh, just goes for power. Tries to hit the back of the ball, slightly leans back. And Kelly can't believe it. Off the crossbar, going the wrong way. No. And the money spinning match at home to Chelsea. Has missed one or two in his Sheffield Wednesday days. Well, he's scuffed it in. Doesn't matter how it gets there. It gets there for Sheridan, for Oldham Athletic. And eventually they get their noses in front for the very first time in a penalty shootout after being behind at home, 1-1. One, one. Twice behind here, 2-2. Two, two. Andy, the first time you were ahead in this tie was with the very last kick. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Um, I mean, that's all correct to lads, I think that, that, you know... And it proved to be just that way. In the first half, it was a case of a new man, the debut boy, David Miss Kelly. Yes, not in April's Fools. This is his debut game, and that's his debut save. A wonderful stop from Dan Kasky. Unfortunately, Reading did finally get the lead and managed to get through Miss Kelly's presence. After that horrendous scramble, it's the big number nine, McIntyre, who scores his fourth of the season. Oldham's away form at this point in the season, you would have expected them to have been crushed. And if it wasn't for Miss Kelly, it might have occurred. But here's another fine stop. A wonderful tip around, this time from down Crawford and eventually Oldham surprised everyone by producing themselves an equaliser one of those inspirational moments for Mandy Ritchie bringing on Mark Allert and he's involved in the build-up and then with the finish two minutes after coming on a very useful point for Andy Ritchie's side Oldham corner on this near side. Deep one to the far post. Duxbury! Just couldn't quite get his foot over the ball. Chelsea finding it hard to break down this very hard working Oldham Athletic team. This is Babiaro looking for the run of Zola. Intercepted though, Babiaro again. Zola having to come deeper and deeper for the ball. To the player boss, Viali. Played square to Goldbeck. Wise peeling away. Wise with the shot. Good save from Kelly. Wise on the follow-up. Headed away. The closest Chelsea have come so far. Wise, the Chelsea skipper with the corner. Kelly flapping. Flicked over eventually by McNiven. It was John Terry who was uh, looking to get in amongst the bodies. So Oldham by no means overawed by the occasion. Allett showing good control. This is Sheridan trying to orchestrate things in the midfield. He gets the ball back. Time to look up and pick out a man. This is Rickers. Still Rickers. Allett. Rickers again shooting from distance. Not too far past the post. Jody Morris's ball forward. Viali's got behind the Oldham defence. Viali into the area. It's Zola with the shot into the side netting. 
long throw in by Lee Duxbury. Again, trying to cause problems. It's just flicked past the post. And so, go forward, looking for Zola behind the Oldham defence. Zola trying to make that yard of space, does well. Finds Babiaro. And then eventually, Duxbury clears McNiven. Just overrunning the ball. Chelsea have it back. This is Zola on the edge of the box, curling it into the far post. Babiaro, and eventually Dennis Wise has uh, followed up, but the goal isn't going to stand. It was a clear handball involving Babiaro. The Oldham players are uh, going over to the referee. And then one or two things are being thrown from the spectators behind Gary Kelly's goal. Confusion, and then the referee, Paul Durkin, has uh, appeared to be struck by a... It uh, is a sausage roll from the crowd. The goal eventually doesn't stand for his troubles. Babiaro is uh, going to get a caution. Nivens chipped forward. Allert controlling on the chest. And then just overrunning it. Zola. This touch eludes him. This is Whitehall with a shot. Off the post. Ahoy has lost it. Ducks be following in. And it was Jubri, I think, who... Uh, Got a tackle in and then McNiven's shot eventually is over the crossbar. But Duxbury appealing to the referee that he was pushed. He uh, certainly has a case. De Hoy lying down injured. But the question is poised, was it a penalty? Time for Morris to look up. Deep cross. There's Flo with the header. Good save from Kelly. Holt's throwing. Garnet amongst the bodies. As was Whitehall. It drops to Sheridan. Just past the post. Good effort from John Sheridan. It's still goalless here at Boundary Park. Chelsea, I'm sure, will uh, not fancy a replay. Morris, short ball to Babiaro, back to Morris. This is Viali picking up the pieces. Viali shooting from the edge of the box, so it's a great strike. Gianluca Viali has given Chelsea the lead. So uh, it's still 1-0, Oldham are by no means out of this game. This is Allert, trying to put Desai under pressure. Back with John Sheridan. This is McNiven on the edge of the area. McNiven shoots! Just over the crossbar. Good effort from the fullback, Scott McNiven. But, uh, just failing to hit the target. Duxby this time. Opting for a shorter throw in. Sheridan. His forward pass is intercepted by Graham Lasso. And now Dennis Wise on the counter attack for Chelsea. He finds Goldbeck on this near side. Goldbeck has got round Holt. Goldbeck breaking into the box. Laid square to Viali and Viali wraps it up. 2 0 now. Viali taking the applause, but it's good work from Goldbeck which has set up that goal. When Andy Ritchie looks back on this season, Nil midweek euphoria. Steve Whitehall's cross almost met by Matthew Tipton as Andy Ritchie's men look to control proceedings. But one reason that City had been on a 12 match unbeaten run was the devastating creativity of Terry Cook. And his wing mastery nearly created an against the run of play opener for Gareth Taylor. Then an out of character John Sheridan error released Cook whose through pass to Michael Brown offered the midfielder a glorious opportunity, which he failed to take. There then followed a personal nightmare for City fullback Richard Edgehill. He was the man who'd originally given the ball away to prompt the Latics forward, only to bring down Tipton in the area in a desperate bid to atone for his earlier error. Referee Bramwood had little hesitation. Paul Reid duly converted. The Oldham fans' delirium matched only by the City fans' dismay. Oldham worked tirelessly throughout the game and deserved any luck that was going. 
Taylor's nod down, missed by Sean Gota, cleared off the line by Toddy Orlikson. Early in the second half, though, the Latics' luck appeared to have deserted them as referee Branwood levelled up the penalty count. Tony Vaughan impeded by Andy Holt. And despite Kevin Horlock successfully converting the Blues' last spot kick, Taylor stepped up for this one. Credit Gary Kelly with the save. Having survived that, Oldham sensed their moment. And it was fitting that Captain Lee Duxbury provided the telling finish. He was the leader of a hard-working pack. A brown run and shot did at least fashion a late goal for City. Ironically, Taylor on hand to convert the rebound. But it would have been harsh on brave Oldham if they hadn't hung on for their win and three priceless points. So Latics looking to also on the verge of the relegation battle. It was vital that Andy Rich's men got something from this game. They unveiled a new signing, player on loan from Sunderland, and Paul Vivas. It was his partner in crime, Matthew Tipton, who's rapidly becoming one of the players to watch in the division, who would have the first chance. Paul Marden's long ball, long ball over the top catches the Burnley defence, as does the header of Tipton, but the clearance off the line is a useful one by Chris Brass. Mark Innes was proving to be a key part in this game for the Latics, and as this move develops, watch him popping up three or four times, as Oldham plays some neat pass and move football. Beaver's also involved, and then the final pass through to Innes nearly provides the chance for him, and Beaver's is miss kick, and then tips his shot wide, and he inches away from giving Latics the lead. Lead eventually did come though. And not surprisingly, it went to the youngster Matthew Tipton. Watch here again, though Oldham's rugged insistence as they push forward. Andrew Holt has rapidly developed into a useful defender, and his powerful kick forward catches the defence. McRiven square pass finds Tipton, and as he's handled on the floor, he knocks the ball in with everybody watching. It doesn't matter how scrappy they are, they all count at this point in the season. And Oldham had a vital lead. Unfortunately for them, it didn't last too long. And Burnley, with Stan Turnant, are proving to be a useful side in the latter part of the season. Here's Andy Payton, a man who scored prolifically for all his clubs, slotting in the equaliser. chances for Latics to win the game after that goal. Paul Reed quite close with the free kick. And then a final effort from Scott McNiven. As the ball bounces for him after Beavers' challenge, he just can't keep the shot down. A point gained or two lots. Well, this was a must-win after the 1-1 draw against local... Getting it across. And Green is up there. Rickers knocks it back in, just beyond Alex's reach. Tipton! Just wide! Well, he thinks he should have had a corner, but the goal kick's given. Well, Sheridan gets himself inside the box this time. There's Rickers with the header. Here's the layoff from Duxbury. Tipton hits it with his left foot. Adams curls it across. Oh, it's a great header and it's in! Lee Duxbury is the man who's done it for Andy Rich's team and Wigan's unbeaten run in the league this season is now in severe jeopardy. Well, first of all, it's about the quality of the free kick from Adam. Then it's about the determination from Duxbury. As it comes in, I want to get on the end of this. Bang! 1-0. Great ball in from Adams. There's Duxbury running in. Gets above his marker. It's in the back of the net. Sweet ball from the free kick. In. And now they are just going to hold it up and frustrate Wigan into submission. It's Wigan's first league defeat of the season.
Andy Ritchie's old... Nichols first touch since coming on as he challenges against Innes. And Innes is the player who will try and get to the loose ball. The deflection takes it through. Carroll is out. He's completely lost the ball. It's now in Tipton. He strikes it inches wide after a deflection. A golden opportunity for Odin to take the lead. Well, that's a great ball from Dizou. And it's through for Howarth. Oh, that's a dangerous challenge from Kelly. And the referee has pointed to the spot. To the Wigan fans' delight, Gary Kelly has brought him down Simon Howarth after he touched the ball past Gary Kelly. The third yellow card of the evening, Neil Redfern with a chance for his third goal for Wigan Athletic. He's already scored one from the spot this season for his new team. That's his second to the delight of the travelling band of supporters from Wigan. They've nosed themselves in front, nudging their way to the lead in a half that was so evenly balanced up till that moment with four minutes left of the first half. Ball's held up, tips him through, and across, Whitehall now with a loose ball, and in by Tipton, all to the level within a minute, Matthew Tipton on his return to the first team, striking his side level, another catalogue of errors, this time at the other end of the field, after Wigan had been gifted the lead, thanks to the penalty by the foul of Kelly, now the other keeper, Carroll, gifts the lead away to Eldon, with a goal for Tipton. What a horrible mistake from the Northern Ireland international. Whitehall with the corner kick. Oh, Holt is up for it, and it's off the post. Clegg was nowhere. Neither was Carroll. It's back in against by Whitehall, and now should go through for Carroll. Clegg, down for Redfern, who's managed to burst himself through. It's there for Clegg again. The loose ball now for Robert, so is it? The rest of the second division sits and waits as the 25 minutes start to elapse a little quicker. Oh, that's a lovely ball through, Bradshaw! Great save from Kelly, a gilt edge miss from Carl Bradshaw though. Rickers tries to go around to Zoo. Well, that's a task in itself, isn't it? He's a human colossus around to Zoo. Sheridan's lost out though, tries his best to get back, but Duxbury's got it, no Whitehall, challenge from behind, Fernandez loops, and the referee loops and loops and loops, and then gives a corner kick, oh my word, that could so easily have been a spot kick then, it was a long loop from Mr Fernandez, the referee this evening, long enough to signal that he wasn't quite sure, and has eventually decided on the set piece, which is the seventh for Oldham in this game, their second of the second half, and it's with Steve Whitehall. Jones is up for it. Oh, that's a great header. That's a goal. Paul Jones, in two minutes of time added on, has got Eldon Athletic in front. He's deserved it. What a performance from Jones. He's marked Howarth out the game and has now surely come up with the winner with two minutes left. His team have come from behind to gain what will probably be Wigan's first defeat away from the JJB Stadium this season. And haven't they deserved it? And this would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? John Sheridan with the free kick. That's not a million miles away. Bradshaw getting ready for a long throw. It's Wigan's last throw of the dice with less than a minute remaining. Dizou trying to get it on. He couldn't get it anywhere at all. Barmer. On and out to Whitehall. The break's on. Tipton with Carroll, Carroll hesitates, Tipton goes on, and round goes Matthew Tipton, his ball in goes into the side netting, it could easily have gone in, because it was deflected. On Paul Jones, Paul, a good evening. Andy Richard switched his team around for this game, and David Miss Kelly was given his home debut here against Chesterfield, who needed to win to stay in the second division. It was also Phil Salt's first start for the Blues. Stuart Tom was back after a lengthy injury layoff, and it's good to see him back in the starting 11 with the five games of the season left. Miss Kelly was involved in the Latics opening attack that proved to be their best moment of the match. His long throw finds Mark Innes, whose tip on finds Tipton. 
and Steve Whitehall is storming in to increase his goal tally and give Mattox the lead. The Tipton Whitehall partnership has really come of age in recent weeks, and certainly Steve Whitehall's had a flourishing end to the season. Eleven goals now for Steve Whitehall. And remember, Tipton scored in the last match against Wigan. But it was to be Chesterfield's night, especially that player there, Roger Willis, who lays the ball to Williams, who then gets it across to the prolific scorer, David Reeves. And Willis should have done better with the first attempt and then got bogged down with the second of Mark Hossey and then David Miss Kelly come to the Latix rescue. It was to be a brief escape, though, for the Blues. As a loose ball is again picked up by the former Tramier player, Ryan Williams. His 1-2 with Willis provides him with a shooting opportunity that does seem difficult, but he makes it look so simple. John Duncan had been sacked during the week after his side's dismal part of the season. And Nicky Laws was in charge, charge for this game tonight, and he must have seen that girl, or what he thought would have been a girl, for his side. But the referee saw it differently. Our man in the middle, Mr Leach, deciding that the ball hadn't crossed the line. You can rewind that one on your video to decide whether it had or it hadn't. Notts County boss Gary Brazil admitted the wheels had come off after another poor display. Richard Liebert's dreadful back header, Matthew Tipton, the beneficiary. of Lassix's season and they play in a cut tie atmosphere against Blackpool. Senior old number 18, Danny Boschel, struck the bar with a curling free kick. In time added on at the end of the game, referee Graham Franklin awarded a penalty for handball against Alan White to give Matthew Tipton the chance to net his third of the season, all scored in the last six games. Oldham finished up 14th, a big improvement on last time's 20th. Luton won, Oldham won. Burnley climb above Gillingham. Denied by the legs of... Tries to pick out Adams and there's a free chance for Tipton. Denied by the legs of Tommy Wright. Tipton. Oh, a consolation now will be something that Eldham have deserved from this game. And Matthew Tipton has come the nearest of any of the Eldham players to getting it. for Holt White, good pass, top of Trout, Holt crosses in, keeper misses, it's Adams, it's a goal for Oldham, and it's Matthew Tipton, Neil Adams header and Tipton will be just pushing on the line, it's 2-1, Oldham surely back into it now, just down, now it's Peter now, looks to kill off the game, it's Farrell, runs at McNiven, Step over, shots. Free kick, four minutes from the start. But Hensford equalised, Stuart Airdrie's cross skimmed off Scott Bonsall's bonce, and it fell to Neil Poynton, who used to play for Oldham. Four minutes before half-time, Oldham regained the lead when Craig Dudley's shot ricocheted past Hensford keeper Mark Gale. And then, just like in the first half, Oldham scored moments after kicking off in the second. Carlo Corazin scored it. But the conference side then made it 3-2 through Neil Davis after more good work from Airdrie. Oldham, struggling in the second division this season, were then put under stern pressure, but they made the game safe in stoppage time. The goal eventually being scored by Matthew Tipton. Tipton chest down. Boschel's passed all and able to find so then but Danny Boschel wins it back off Kerry Nichols. Boschel looks to go alone, that's a good save by Andy Marriott. Boschel did well to win the battle. Spot by Salt, hint of handball there. 
Referee allows the game to continue. It's Phil Salt, and he skids off Andy Knight's hands, and it's in the back of the net. Phil Salt's effort. The keeper really looked like he should have dealt with that. King well at Neil Redfern. Never really appeared under any pressure. It's a great moment, never unable to cut it out properly. It's McLaughlin, goes past Gary Kelly, Brian McLaughlin, and it's 1-0. Oh, that's great play by the Wigan. The side in midfield. Marshall. That's the ball on the top, looking for Matthew Titson, who chests it down. It's still Matthew Titson, who's surely brought down there. And the referee points to the spot. It may be, I'm not sure there's going to be, well, it's going to be Matthew Tipton. It's Tipton, and it's there for all in place, right in the bottom corner. And it's 2-1, it was Tipton who earned the penalty. Tipton who converts. Roberts, Garnet tracking out. Dixon, the cross comes in well, and that's a great header from Alan O'Glock, and it's 2-2. Two -two. It's a great cross from Hugh Dixon. This time it was the other McLaughlin, Allen, that got across. That's Padula available on the overlap, picks him out. Padula still. It's a great chance for Wigan. It's Roberts, fires it across the area, and Alan McLaughlin puts it in for Wigan. And it's Wigan to go through on the goal and goal rule. Three goals to two. Alan McLaughlin with his second of the Well, from the moment it left his boot, he just thought that might have been the equaliser, the ball. Really holding up in midfield there for them. It's Cars. There's 45 seconds remaining of the added time. It's Mark Alt who heads on. It's Matthew Tipton sneaking into fire on and level with only 40 seconds remaining in the added time. It's Matthew Tipton that brings on and level and gives them the point they so wanted. But the golfing finances. Sheridan. Looking for Tipton, who turns well, it's Matthew Tipton with the effort. Just wide of the loose and pulse. For one second it appeared like Tipton's effort might have just been hit. Rickers, and for Corazon, who heads down well, it's Matthew Tipton charging into the area. Tipton gets there first, it's got pulls the save out of Gotts Carlton. Matthew Tipton just joined Tim Bell Tenacity, we've come to expect in recent weeks. First, with Holt now. Out, let it down for Duxbury. He tries the shots just wide of the post. Well, I just talked about Lee Duxbury operating in a central role. Got central there and almost scores. Holt looks in the box for Corris and it's how challenging. Cars. Oh, just still struggling to pick out. A chance as the ball over the top catches all the mouth. It's Fletcher and Defoe charging through. Steve Fletcher, oh, great save by Gary Kelly. Steve Fletcher ousted Sean Garnett, but what a great save by the Oldham keeper. Now it's Sheridan. Back to Cor across to Corazon. Walks through for Tony Cars. He's found himself in some space. It's Cars. Wants to go past Stewart. Still Cars. Saved by Stewart. Tony Cars has just let him down in that situation. Again, the run was there. But Jorgensen. Garnett again with a headed clearance. The ball's back in the area, it's flicked up from Tyndall, it's Hater, it's 1-0 Bournemouth. The ball wasn't cleared efficiently, it came back in man Hater. And well, Bournemouth take the lead, only eight minutes into the second half. There's. Well, again, finding problems just with that final ball. But this time it's Holt that slides in hers. Cuts back past Shoes, it's David Ayers, what's the penalty? Penalty given. Richard shoots the arm went out and the referee points to the spot. All right, will we join Sheridan after Carl Corazon's miss against Wrexham? Notice that time there was a little debate between the two, but Corazon willing to pass responsibility onto Sheridan. And it's Sheridan, and it's 1 1 right in the corner. The keeper went the right way, but picked the perfect spot. If ever you want to.